good morning. And I'm going to be reading a book today for story starters, not the whole book, just part. Bella the Bunny, Fairy Animals of Misty Wood by Lily Smale. Small, geez, I'm reading wrong. And um, there's, again, there's a whole series. Here's a picture in the back showing all the different fairy animals. Um, and so this one, I will, after I read it, I will turn it into the library and then you can check it out yourself. But if you want to check out some other ones there, they are waiting to be checked out. So sit down, which you're already doing, and play with something. And I will start book reading chapter one of Bella the Bunny, Fairy Animals of Misty Wood by Lily Small. This one, chapter one is called The Talking Bud. Little picture. Spring had come to Misty Wood. The early morning sun could see lots of baby plants starting to grow on the ground below as he rose through the bright blue sky. With a warm smile, the sun reached out his beams to help the plants push up through the soil. High among the trees, there was a flash of silver. It was a little bunny. She had soft silver gray fur, violet eyes that sparkled like jewels, and a pair of golden fairy wings. Her name was Bella, and she was a bud bunny, one of the fairy animals who lived in Misty Wood. There's a picture you can see. Whoops, there we go. Can see Bella, and can you see the sun that's coming up out of the trees? It's springtime. We have a little bit more winter, but then it'll be spring. As Bella flitted through the trees, she sang a song about her special job she was going to do. Open the beautiful spring flowers. Shine on, shine on, big bright sun. I'm on my way to have some fun. I'll be spending happy hours turning buds into flowers. Suddenly, Bella felt something trickle down her fur. Droplets of rain had started to fall. Pitter patter went the raindrops as they bounced on the leaves. Bella smiled as the water tickled her nose. She liked the rain just as much as she liked the sun because it helped the flowers to grow too. Bella twitched her velvety nose. The leaves and the earth and the new plants smelled lovely in the rain. Everything was green and fresh. Misty would be even more beautiful when, I'm, when I've done my job, Bella thought. She twirled her wings and did a happy somersault. Soon there will be lovely flowers everywhere. Just as quickly as it had begun, the rain stopped and the sun had shi started shining again. No time to lose, Bella told herself. I must hurry to Bluebell Glade. There are hundreds of bluebells there just waiting for me to open them. So she darted off through the trees, singing more of her little song. Little buds, just wait for me. I'll come soon to help you be. Pretty flowers, fresh and bright, blue and yellow, pink and white. Hello, Bella. Bella spun around at the sound of her name. Carla, a cobweb kitten, was flying along behind her. Her wings sparkled in the sunlight as she hurried to catch up. Carla was Bella's best friend. She had white fur, the same color as the mist that gathered under the trees and beautiful spots that looked like chocolate chips. Carla flew up and the two friends touched noses to say hello. I can't stop. I must get to Bluebell Glade, Bella explained. Then she noticed a little basket Carla was carrying made from tightly woven flower stems. Your basket looks heavy today, Carla. It's full to the brim with dewdrops, Carla rep replied proudly. Just like the bud bunnies, the cobweb, cobweb kittens had an important job to do in Misty Wood. Every day, the cobweb kittens gathered dewdrops and hung them on the cobwebs so that they glittered in the sunlight. Here is a picture of Carla. Oh, it's so hard to get there. There we go. Carla and Bella saying hello to each other and giving each other a, a nose kiss where you rub noses. They're good friends. Suddenly, Bella's ears quivered. She could hear a buzzing sound. 
What's that? Bella said, spinning around. Look, Carla cried. Bella turned to see what Carla had spotted. A cloud of tiny wings glinted in the sunshine. Hundreds of insects were flying toward them. A small blue June bug jumped onto Bella's nose. Oh, sorry, the June bug squeaked before whizzing on. Then a swarm of striped hoverflies buzzed by. Hey, where are you going? Called Carla. Zzz, mustache, the hoverflies replied, following the June bug. I've never seen so many insects, Bella told Carla. I wonder what's going on. A big yellow butterfly fluttered up to them. Hello, Mr. Butterfly, Bella said. Where are you all going? Today is the Misty Wood Insect Sports Day, he said. I'm the chief steward, and he twirled his long antenna grandly. Wow, Bella gasped. Insect Sports Day. How could we have forgotten, said Carla. It happens every year on Heather Hill. Do come along, everyone's welcome, said the friendly butterfly. before whooshing after the hoverflies. Oh, I wish we could go, Carla sighed. Watching the insect race must be so much fun. I know, said Bella. Maybe we can if we really are really quick with our cobwebs and our flower buds. Great idea, Carla exclaimed. I better start hanging up these dewdrops then. Bye, Bella. See you later at Heather Hill. Carla rubbed noses with her friend and flew off toward the edge of the woods where the cobwebs were waiting for their dewdrops. Bye, Bella called after her. Then she set off to her bluebell glade, humming her happy song. When Bella reached the glade, she swooped down and landed among the bluebells. Each one had a lot of tight green buds just waiting to be opened. Bella's nose tingled with excitement. When she finished her work, the glade would be a sea of blue and the sweet smell of the flowers would drift all through Misty Wood. She hopped over to a bluebell stem and twitched her nose against the biggest bud. Very slowly, the petals began to unfurl. Bella hopped back and watched, her whiskers quivering in delight. This was her favorite part of the job. It was like watching a beautiful present unwrap itself. She held her breath and a pretty blue flower, the same shape as a fairy's cap, burst open. Bella sang happily as she hopped and bounced her way over to another bud. A hippie hop and a hippity hip. Opening flowers makes me skip. Soon she had opened dozens of bluebells. They tinkled like bells in the breeze and the glade was filled with their sweet scent. Then there was just one flower left to open. Bella hopped over to it eagerly. One more flower and then she could go to insect sports day. But just as she placed her velvety nose next to the bud, something strange happened. I'll show you the picture for you. Please don't, a voice squeaked. Bella hopped, Bella hopped back on her heels and stared at the plant in shock. The voice was coming from the flower. And all the times she'd been a bud bunny, Bella had never heard a bud speak to her before. What was going on? I'll read a little bit more of chapter two so that you can know what's gonna happen. A sad ladybug, chapter two. Bella pricked up her ears and listened. Everything was quiet. Maybe she imagined the voice. After all, buds can't talk. Or can they, she said to herself. She hopped up close to the bluebell again. She was about to touch her nose to the bud when, didn't you hear what I said? The bud squeaked, please, please leave me alone. Bella jumped back in surprise. She definitely hadn't imagined the voice this time. Don't open me, the flower pleaded. Its voice was quivery now as if it was about to cry. Why ever not, Bella asked. The bud was quiet again. Bella leaned in close. Don't you want to be a pretty flower? She whispered. The bud, bud made a noise that sounded like a sigh. Then it said in a teeny tiny voice, well, 
The thing is, I can't hear you, Bella said. The voice spoke again, a bit louder. The thing is, you see, I like being a bud. I don't want to change. Bella's ears shot up and her eyes grew wide. She couldn't believe what the flower was saying. Don't be silly, she said. You're a bluebell. You're a beautiful bluebell. No, squeaked the bud. But Bella's nose was already twitching. The bud was probably just shy. Once Bella had opened it, the flower saw how, and the flower saw how lovely it looked, it would soon change its mind. So she pressed her nose against the bud and wiggled it. One by one, the shiny blue petals unpeeled to reveal the biggest, brightest bluebell in the whole glade. There, see, you're beautiful, Bella cried, clapping her silky paws. No, the voice wailed. I'm not beautiful at all, look at me. Something flew out of the flower, zoomed toward Bella and landed on her nose. Bella squinted to see what it was. It was a tiny ladybug and she had a frown on her face. Oops, there we go. And that will be all that I can read of Fairy Animals of Misty Wood, the, of Bella the Bunny. You can check it out to see what happened with Bella the Bunny. It's fun, except then it's sad that I don't finish the story. But I hope that you might like to check out the book and see what happens. And if not this one, maybe another one. Thanks for coming again today, my friends. As I said, get out and run around and uh, shake out your, shil your sillies. And then you can come inside and warm up under a blanket and read a book. Thanks for coming. See you next time. Toodaloo.